Oh, awesome, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Swamit uh, from Wisconsin, and uh, I did this work with my collaborator, uh, Prashant Nair, who is at UBC. And today I'll talk about uh, the dirty secrets of SSDs, uh, it's, it's embodied cost. And uh, I, I would like to start with this uh, picture. Uh, this is a picture from one of the LA suburbs. It's not a picture uh, from a, a you know, a Hollywood movie. It's, it's, uh, it's really scary. Uh, and you know it's it's important that we recognize that climate change is a is a is a is here and it's it's uh, it's something that we need to uh, fight with, right? So it 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 would be uh, it would be a sort of mistake not to show this uh, uh, hockey stick uh, graph. So I, I just started with this, um, and it's important that we recognize that. Uh, climate change is a problem. And how we are contributing to this problem? Uh, well, a lot of the devices that we use have a huge uh, carbon footprint. So this is a, uh, this is a picture for, you know, a couple of devices that we use uh, in an average American household. And this, all of this uh, is equivalent to uh, driving 5,000 5, of miles. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how people compute embodied carbon cost in this talk. And uh, the, um, the cost shown uh, in this slide is both embodied cost and the uh, you know, operational uh, carbon emissions uh, produced by these devices, right? But the bottom line is uh, the computers that we build, the computers that we use have a significant carbon footprint. Uh, my goal today is to, to uh, talk a little bit about uh, how embodied uh, carbon cost is computed, and uh, then we'll switch gears to talking about SSDs, and then what are potential strategies and directions that we can use to make uh, storage more sustainable. So uh, a carbon footprint of a computational device uh, uh, comes from four phases, actually. So uh, we emit carbon when we are manufacturing a device, uh, when we use it, we use electricity and that electricity may have uh, emitted carbon. Uh, when we are transporting this device and when we are recycling uh, this device, there is also some carbon emission. So this is the data from Apple's uh, iPhone X and 13 inch MacBook Pro. So this is something that Apple publishes. And what we see is a uh, majority of carbon comes from the manufacturing or production phase, right? And this is something that we uh, call scope three or embodied carbon emissions. Uh, now, what's interesting is uh, you may think that, uh, you know, a, a computer or a laptop has a lot of metal in it. It has like a metal casing, uh, but that's not something that uh, dominates the embodied cost. The majority of the embodied cost comes from uh, silicon, uh, especially uh, CPU, RAM, uh, SSD, that, that contributes a, a significant amount of uh, carbon when we are uh, manufacturing these components. And the reason we uh, have this type of uh, footprint is because uh, semiconductor manufacturing is extremely complex. It requires uh, precise. Uh, 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 it, it requires precise manufacturing. At the same time, it requires material uh, that involves a very intensive uh, mining effort. So you need these. Uh, sometimes you need these rare earth uh, metals. Uh, that are very hard to find. You need to dig up a lot of soil, uh, process and refine material so that you can use it for the manufacturing. The manufacturing itself is also fairly complex and energy intensive. And the last stage when we assemble all the components that also involves a lot of energy. Unfortunately, uh, manufacturing assembly uh, of semiconductor happens in, uh, most of it happens in, in regions where we don't have access to renewable energies, right? So majority of storage, for example, is manufactured in uh, Korea. Korea does not have, uh, you know, sustainable access to renewable energy. So they have to rely on uh, natural gas and uh, coal uh, type of energy sources. Uh, so there is both direct uh, carbon emissions when we are manufacturing semiconductor, and there is also an indirect uh, source of carbon emissions such as mining and uh, refining metals and so on. Uh, 
and unfortunately uh, this manufacturing uh, part is becoming more and more complex it uh, already requires significant amount of energy which is powered by uh, coal and natural gases uh, so uh, shrinking transistors uh, is something that we 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 look up to i mean we we want to uh, improve the density of our storage we also uh, want to put more transistor on chips so that we can add functionality but it's making manufacturing complex it needs uh, increased number of manufacturing steps it needs uh, in, increased energy because individual in, uh, step is becoming more and more energy intensive so this is the data collected by imec which is a fab in europe and what they show is as we are shrinking transistors uh, on a uh, logic die so this this has nothing to do with flash manufacturing this is purely uh, you know cpu type of uh, manufacturing but uh, nonetheless this shows that as we are in uh, as we are reducing the uh, dimension of transistors the carbon emissions are increasing um, and this data is uh, is shown for two types of uh, grids when with 70% electricity comes from the coal and the uh, uh, the next one where we have some uh, availability of uh, renewable energy right so uh, bottom line is uh, if we are growing uh, uh, with the growing man manufacturing complexity the carbon emission uh, cost uh, is also uh, increasing so the reason we focus on ssd is because uh, we went over a lot of uh, life cycle analysis reports for for the hardware and some of them have a significant uh, uh, you know the ssd footprint for some of them were significantly high and that captured our attention and we started thinking about what is the embodied cost of storage right so the flash manufacturing is becoming more and more complex and it's one of the uh, one of the only uh, sort of process technology uh, one of the only uh, manufacturing processes which has not lost steam so uh, you know if you look at the logic uh, side of things uh, 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 there is a there is some slowdown in uh, scaling and adding uh, 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 density but flash uh, for some reason and with a lot of innovation has continued to to grow right so there is also a prediction uh, that uh, the, at some point of time in future ssds are going to replace uh, hard drives because the flash cost is also decreasing so for all of these reasons uh, i think it's important that we study the embodied cost of storage uh, and and think about uh, the sustainability challenges so uh, in our paper, we talk about the uh, embodied cost of SSDs, and we collect this data from publicly available uh, life cycle analysis reports. Um, so the, in, in, our, uh, in our data set, we have uh, SSDs from, capacity, uh, from 64 GB capacity to uh, uh, you know, 3.8 uh, terabytes of capacity. We, uh, we collected these LCA reports, which use five different uh, uh, LCA softwares. They use different methodologies. The reason we use uh, different uh, data, data uh, points here is because methodologies can have biases. And by using an ensemble of uh, you know, LCA reports, we can we can mitigate these uh, biases, but throughout these LCA reports, we see that uh, flash uh, storage has a significant uh, carbon footprint, right? And uh, there is some variability. We do see some uh, outliers, uh, but overall, we see that on average, uh, flash has this storage embodied factor of uh, 0.16 uh, kilograms of CO2 per uh, gigabytes, which is which uh, to me is very surprising because uh, uh, what this means is if you have a terabyte of, uh, if you have a terabyte of uh, storage, it's going to cost you 160 kilograms of CO2e. And uh, if you recall, your, uh, your uh, MacBook Pro has a 500 uh, kilograms of CO2e, right? So compared to uh, overall device, uh, if your storage is significant portion of it, then we, we should start thinking about uh, mitigating uh, these uh, this uh, uh, carbon footprint even more seriously, right? So uh, this uh, data 
uh, shows some outliers, but it's kind of concentrated towards the mean. Um, and that doesn't mean that this data is perfect or there are no inaccuracies. Maybe, uh, you know, the LCA methodologies have uh, some biases which are common across uh, methodologies. So that's something that we are uh, trying to investigate right now. But overall, we do see a lot of, uh, you know, consensus among different LCAs and different LCA reports uh, when it comes to SSD embodied factor. And it's not just because of, uh, you know, flash, because SSDs do have, uh, you know, different components. So, so it's not just a flash chip. The SSD is essentially, you have some RAM uh, on your SSD card, you have a controller and you have a bunch of flash chips. So this is the data that uh, we derive from one of the vendors uh, sustainability report. So uh, this may or may not be very accurate, but what this suggests is, uh, you know, there is, uh, there is not, there is a lot of uh, complexity when uh, when we are uh, thinking about SSDs because the embodied cost could come from DRAM. It could also come from an intelligent controller that you have uh, on chip, right? So uh, this is still not very conclusive, but we believe that uh, by digging a bit more into what is causing this embodied uh, cost, we can uh, design our SSDs uh, yeah, more sustainably. So there is a lot of room for redesigning SSDs for sustainability, especially uh, if we find that uh, DRAM is a bigger culprit uh, on the SSDs than the flash chips, then that, that could mean uh, that we can uh, tune the capacities uh, capacity of DRAM. We can, uh, we, we can also see a very interesting trade-off between capacity and lifetime. Uh, also, there is a uh, new DRAM-less SSDs uh, in the market. They, they may be more sustainable, but it's still something that we need to investigate uh, a bit more before we can uh, conclude anything. Uh, the other interesting uh, 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 exploration that we did in our paper is this uh, analysis on uh, what's the uh, uh, storage embodied factor for the hard drives, right? And we do see that storage embodied factor for hard drives is an order of magnitude lower as compared to SSDs. Um, the, the, the consequence of this is if we take this very simple uh, case study where uh, let's say average uh, energy consumption of hard drives is 4.2 uh, watt hour, average SSD energy consumption is lower, uh, uh, that's 1.3 watt hour. And if we assume that both hard drive and SSDs have five year of lifetime, in that case, uh, the, uh, for, for, for this scenario, we actually see that uh, hard drives have a lower uh, uh, total, um, uh, total carbon because uh, the embodied cost of SSDs is significantly higher than uh, uh, hard, uh, hard drives, right? So, uh, given this uh, data, uh, I think it's it's really interesting to study more uh, about the uh, what are the consequences of uh, designing storage system with different uh, different type of uh, mediums, right? So should we use hard drives uh, or should we use SSDs? I think uh, there are lots of options to pick up from. Uh, there is also an option of uh, using DRAM-less SSDs. Uh, we can also build a hybrid storage and uh, continuing on this path uh, of course there is uh, there is an interesting analysis to be done uh, when we want when do we want to store data locally and when do we want to use cloud storage so in general it's a rich uh, design space uh, the other uh, potential direction that we can take while improving the uh, sustainability is to improve the lifetime of ssds uh, so where leveling, where leveling strategies are different, granularities can help a lot. Uh, and that's something that has been studied uh, a lot, but not from a sustainability standpoint. So when we are thinking about sustainability, both the uh, CapEx, OpEx cost and the lifetime uh, is, is important to, to consider. So extending uh, lifetime by using wear leveling strategies, uh, also by uh, using uh, error correcting codes uh, that can mitigate device level errors and extend the lifetime can, can also be uh, a really uh, important strategy moving forward. 
um, and above uh, uh, and and even beyond uh, using ECC, can we use uh, a data replication in the data center so that we can uh, tolerate some of these device failures? I think all of these strategies will uh, help us understand uh, what's the right storage architecture we want to use. Um, so I'll, I'll summarize this uh, talk by saying uh, climate change is inevitable. We, we need to start thinking about how we can build sustainable uh, systems that, that will be used by uh, billions of users. Uh, we, we see that SSDs have a significant embodied cost uh, but at the same time, there is a rich uh, des design space that exists that we have not really explored yet. So we need a lot of uh, out of the box ideas to make storage systems sustainable. Uh, and when we are thinking about these strategies, we need to think about not just embodied cost or OPEX cost, but also the lifetime of our storage devices. Uh, so with this, I'll uh, conclude my talk. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, and I can take questions uh, if there are any. Um, yeah, if there's a question, uh, Aman, um, or Amanda, yeah, if you can set up that while we're doing it. Anyway, just, uh, sorry, I didn't raise my hand. Um, hello, I'm yeah. Jeff, I'm a student here. Uh, so you talked a lot about the manufacturing carbon costs being from the high energy of the manufacturing processes. Um, the fact that they can't source renewable energy. But I've also read that a lot of the emissions are from the actual chemicals used for semiconductor manufacturing. Yes. So uh, do, you have, uh, do you have any yeah. sense of like what fraction is unavoidable from the chemical processes versus from the energy? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, yes, there, are, there is uh, a lot of actual chemical emissions that happens, for example, SF6, uh, which is sulfur hexafluoride, uh, that's used in uh, you know, uh, semiconductor manufacturing. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I think uh, the, the amount of uh, emissions because of gases is less than 15 to 20%. Again, it depends on the uh, process that you use. But majority of the uh, emission is because of electricity and uh, uh, not because of the chemicals. The other thing that uh, fabs do these days is they uh, try to avoid uh, putting, putting these things uh, out in the uh, environment. They do some kind of processing uh, or abatement uh, so that this uh, emission reduces. Um, but yeah, clearly, I mean, there is some part that is una uh, unavoidable, and uh, I don't have a exact number, but a ballpark number would be 15 to 20 percent. Um, yeah. Hi, Swamit. This is Andrew Chen from the University of Chicago. So first, thanks for working on the storage area. This is a super important area, I think, for this whole sustainability area. Uh, but I was uh, I wanted to comment on your figure seven uh, in your paper where you, you have this nice chart that shows how emissions are increasing per process node. And I just wanted to point out that, that those graphs are actually normalized in CO2 per centimeter squared. So actually, to the software people in the audience, you're getting a lot more transistors per unit carbon, right? So a, a lot of the sustainability challenges, I think, in this area, we have to be a little bit careful about how we measure them, because it's ultimately driven by massive consumption of computing and transistors here. The processes are actually getting much more efficient in carbon per transistor but we're just consuming billions of them. Right, yeah, uh, so you're right. The, the carbon emission per transistor is not really growing. It's just that number of transistors are increasing exponentially. So, uh, and, and the same goes with the, the storage part also. Uh, and what's interesting is, uh, I think we, we need to investigate a bit more on uh, what part of the SSD is really contributing most to the uh, embodied cost. And um, yeah, I, I, I agree with that uh, uh, statement. 